Hi guys, if you caught the last tutorial, we traced a monstera leaf with the pen tool. And in this tutorial, we're gonna pick up where we left off and do the line work, the veins in the leaf. And we're gonna draw those with the pen tool using the width tool in Illustrator. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. So here is the leaf silhouette that we traced in the last tutorial, and I wanna change the color to green. So let me go over here and choose this swatch here, R36G119 and B28, okay? Make that green. And then we're gonna draw the details here in a blue color. So let me get the pen tool and I'll deselect the leaf and then I'll make this none and then change the color of the stroke from none to this blue swatch here, R56, G184, and B229. So I'll be tracing just like we did before this leaf here. And of course, it's a template layer, so the leaf image is really faint, but I think that's fine for this because I don't need to be too accurate. I kind of just want a, a little bit of guidance, but some of this is gonna be of my own choosing here. All right, so here is where we're gonna use the shortcuts again with the pen tool. So I'm gonna hold down Command on a Mac or Control on a PC just to be able to grab a handle and do a little adjustment as I work. Now, when you're just drawing individual paths like this, what are called open paths in Illustrator, you just wanna be able to let go of the pen tool and you do that by holding, again, Command or Control to switch to the white arrow, then you can click on the artboard to deselect everything and then go back to working with the pen tool and a new path. And I'll go here and make a little edit, kind of add a little bit of character to that line. Now, I'm making all of these lines right now with just a uniform one point stroke. But let's go ahead and change this to a tapered stroke. And I'm gonna do this by applying a width profile. And you can find width profiles here in the stroke panel. There's a menu down here at the bottom that has a lot of different saved profiles. So what I want is something kind of like this, one that starts out wide on one end and tapers at the other end, but this one is just not quite what I want. It tapers too sharply. So let me go ahead and just draw a quick line holding shift here, one straight line, and then I'll apply that width profile to it. And what we're gonna do now is edit that to create a custom width profile. I'll close the stroke panel and I'll zoom in so we can really see this. So this is kind of like our test case here. And we have a standard width profile applied to it, but I can edit this using the width tool. So I'm gonna grab the width tool here and just pull on these little handles. So this is how width profiles work. You can hover and when you see a little width point highlighted, you'll see these two handles opposite that you can use to change the width in that one particular point. Uh, what I wanna do is just go to this last width point over here and just pull it out a little bit so this isn't quite so tapered. And then I don't see any other points here in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is click to create one and then pull my handles out. And I just want a little bit more roundness here. You can slide these points as well. And then maybe I'll tighten up this taper at the very end. Okay, so I think this width profile that I've created is gonna work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and save it. So right here up on the control bar, we can see there's another little width profile menu here. And there's also a save button here. So if I save this, it's gonna add to my profiles and I'll be able to access it later. So I'm gonna just call this leaf. So I remember when I created this. All right, now I'm clicking on my artboard to deselect. And let me go back over here, grab my selection tool, my black arrow, and click on this first path here and then go back up to that width profile menu and grab the one that I just created, clicking on it, 
Now what we can see is it's larger at one end, tapered at the other, and this is actually the opposite of how I want it to look. So what I'm gonna do is go into the stroke panel and use this button here, flip along, and now it appears the way I want it to. So what I can do is just select these and I can apply this using my eyedropper tool. So if I just click with the eyedropper tool, I should be able to copy that appearance. But what's happening, as you can see, I still have those blunt, uh, non-tapering strokes here. So there's something going on here that I need to fix. And that is with the eyedropper tool. The default setting for the eyedropper tool is these two checkboxes at the top unchecked. So that's appearance and appearance. If I check both of those, then I will be able to sample the width profile from this other stroke here because width profiles are an appearance. And then I'm gonna have to go back over here and flip these around. All right, so it looks like I have got some nice tapering strokes happening and I'm gonna go ahead and draw the rest of them. So I'll grab my pen tool once again and just click and drag and click and drag, oops to create another one. And oh, by the way, we can see, I have to apply this width profile to this stroke here and flip it around. And the reason I'm not able to draw with this, let's try this again and see if this will work. I'm gonna start here. Let me undo that. Click and drag first. I like that because that's a a good way to make a nice S curve with this. All right, so what I need to do is that there's a setting that I need to have. So what I would like to have happen here is every time I draw with the pen tool, after I draw one of these width profile strokes, I would like it to apply to the next thing I draw. And because width profile is an appearance attribute, let's go to the appearance panel and look in this menu here. And what I have is new art has basic appearance selected. And so this needs to be unchecked, unselected, because I don't want to revert to the basic appearance every time I draw with the pen tool. I want to have that updated appearance, that nice width profile. All right, so now let me apply this width profile here. I'll go back, grab it from my menu. It's going in the right direction now, that's good. All right, and let's see if that helps us to be able to draw subsequent paths with that same width profile, and that works, great. So new art has basic appearance. Uncheck that in the appearance panel and you'll be able to continuously draw using this width profile. And just clicking and dragging and then going to the command key and clicking on the artboard to release the pen tool and be able to start a new line. All right, let's see. Let me edit this just a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll draw the center one. And just be careful when you do the center one because as you can see, every time I hover over one of these open-ended paths here, uh, my pen tool wants to just add on to those paths. So I'm gonna just start free and clear up here to make sure that I don't join this with any other paths. And I'm using my space bar just to bring that down because I didn't like where I positioned it at first. All right, width profiles work fine when you have you know, the, these one point strokes here, but they can get proportionately larger when you bump up the stroke weight. So I'm gonna, let's see, put this up at three points to make that center rib a little bit more visible. And it looks like I'm gonna have to drag some of these just to have them overlapping the center rib a little bit more. So I'm using my white arrow just to go in and make sure that these are all sort of overlapping here. Just dragging that, grabbing this point here and dragging it in, grabbing this point here and also this one. Okay, that looks good. Now, one final thing, because this 
width profile is blunt at the end. I want to edit just this one instance of it, just this one path here. So I'm going to go back and get the width tool again. And what I can do is add another point here close to the end, just pulling out those handles. And then I can take this very end point and pull in the handles. And that kind of just rounds off the top there. And you can make that longer or shorter, just depending on how you slide this point right here near the end. Okay, so that's nice and round. That's what I wanted. Okay, great. Now I can back up here and I've got some nice line work that I can add to this leaf over here. So what I'm gonna do is just grab all of it and use Command or Control G to group it and then I can place it on top of my leaf. And that looks pretty good. In the next tutorial, I'll demonstrate adding shading to the leaf. So please subscribe and you'll know the moment it comes out. I hope you enjoyed getting some pen tool practice with me. Thank you for watching.